rebuilding a Stuart 10 V steam engine part 10, repairing the damaged part of the standard, plugging some holes in the cylinder casting and drilling some new holes to fix the cladding in place. This is the repair that I made using JB Weld, but I didn't just stick the part back in place, I ground away both surfaces of the damaged part and the standard itself, and by doing this I ended up with a clean metal surface to allow the JB Weld to stick securely to the metal parts. In this clip I'm using my Proxon motor tool fitted with a very small drum sander to clean up the JB Weld. With a bit of luck, when I finish this job, it should be what could be called an invisible repair. And because I cleaned up both surfaces of the metal as I've just mentioned, it will be quite a strong repair. This clip shows me using a flapper wheel in the bench mounted Proxon motor tool to clean around the edge. I think it's time to show the other side. I've turned the engine over and here you can see where the broken part has been stuck back in place. Even though I sat the engine upside down on a piece of polythene, the part that I stuck back in place is minutely below the level of the rest of it. I was a bit concerned that when I tighten the fixing bolt, it may crack the part again. A belt and braces approach, I'm going to use some cellulose stopper to level out the top surface perfectly. Cellulose stopper or cellulose putty is used in the automotive industry. It's a very fine filler. This stuff is not like standard car body filler, it's only for very, very fine imperfections. And it's very important not to spread this stuff too thick on the part that you're using it on. This thickness is about right and it shouldn't take long before it dries. And while I'm waiting for the stopper to harden, it's time to plug two holes in the cylinder. The original holes that were drilled for the massively overscale flanges are far too close to where I need to drill two more holes to secure the cladding, hence the plugging of the holes. Why am I using brass, you may be thinking? Why don't I just use steel? The answer to that is steel is harder than cast iron, and I really am going to be drilling one of the holes very close to one of these plugs. Before I drill the cladding mounting holes, I'm going to drill the stud holes in the end of the cylinder block to make sure that the new studs that I'm going to fit go well down into the cylinder. Originally one of these holes went right into the place where there was a stud and I showed that in a previous episode so I'm using a 7BA tapping size drill to just make sure that these holes are long enough to take the studs. I did this job a couple of times to make sure that both of the holes were the correct length and then using a plug tap or a bottoming tap I threaded the holes all the way down. In the English language, to use a term like bottoming tap, which I think is the USA equivalent of a plug tap, seems to be a bit wrong. Coupling the word bottom and tap is a very odd combination. The other problem with these bottoming taps, no I've done it again, the other problem with these plug taps is they don't cut quite as freely as the taper ones and you can snap them off quite easily. And the smaller the tap, the easier it is to snap it off. If you're doing jobs like this using such small parts, you do need to practice and acquire a feel for it, because no one wants the tap to snap off in the bottom. Both of the holes were tapped successfully, so now it's time to drill the holes at the other side and repeat the process. I'm using a cardboard template and a felt tip marker pen, after which using my small Proxon pillar drill, I'm drilling some holes, hopefully in the right place, which are tapping size for 7BA. It's important not to drill cast iron at too high a speed because it will burn out the drill. This is a little bit fast, but when I put the pressure on the drill bit, the friction of the cast iron slows down the drill. And as the drill works its way through the cast iron, you can hear that everything slows down a bit. I find these small Proxon mini drills to be really good, particularly this one that's in the drill stand, when it comes to the drilling of such small holes as you see here. It's far more sensitive than using the large pillar drill. After the successful drilling operation, the threading operation, with a bit of luck, will be the same. I can really do without snapping off the tap at this late stage of the job. If you're doing a job like this, make sure you do not lose concentration. If you're getting a bit bored with doing the job, do something else and come back to it. And another tip, make sure you don't drop the cylinder on the floor with the tap in the hole, because it will break. And yes, I have done that in the past. Here you see the finished repair to the top part of the standard. 
I levelled everything off using a piece of 400 grit sandpaper on a metal plate. And now the top surface of the repaired part is perfectly level. And after a bit of painting, you wouldn't know it had been broken. Unless, of course, you are watching the video series. I've marked the position on the second piece of cladding using the template, and it's now ready for drilling. That's it for this episode. As usual, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.